Greetings from Washington, D.C. This is Peter Thomas of NAALP. As the summer comes to a close, we've been uh, aware of new regulations that have been proposed on the concept of bundling or bundled payments. There are many forms of bundling, and whether this impacts orthotics and prosthetics uh, in the near future or the distant future, uh, either way, this is an important concept that needs to be understood by the orthotic and prosthetic profession. The Secretary of Health and Human Services has already announced that by the end of 2016, she intends 30% of Medicare beneficiaries to be in, involved in what she calls APMs, Alternative Payment Methods, not the fee-for-service program. And by 2018, 50% of Medicare beneficiaries are supposed to be in APMs. Bundled payments is one method of uh, an alternative payment model. Uh, and ultimately there are many others. Uh, accountable care organizations, managed care arrangements under the Medicare Advantage Plan, uh, shared savings programs, um, other mechanisms uh, such as that. CMS has been experimenting with bundling for several years now uh, in the wake of the Affordable Care Act uh, through what they call the BCPI program. Uh, BCPI is an acronym that essentially stands for Bundled Payments and Care Initiative, and it's designed to test many different forms of bundling across the country. Hospitals and hospital systems primarily approached CMS and offered to bundle various conditions for various patients uh, and offered uh, new payment rates that would encompass the episode of care for a given uh, a condition uh, across a time frame and tied that to certain quality outcomes. And if those uh, quality outcomes are met, uh, usually these bundled payment programs result in some kind of a shared savings going back to the provider when the, the, the episode of care payment is compared to the fee-for-service program and what Medicare would have paid under that program. So the, the gulf between the two is what's shared with the provider. There are about 1,500 bundled payment programs under the BCPI program, and the, the theory is to experiment, uh, do demonstration projects, and to expand and make permanent what works, and to get rid of what doesn't. We have very little data on where these programs are or what they've actually accomplished or not accomplished uh, in terms of quality outcomes and lesser costs. There's a more uh, immediate concern, and that is uh, new regulations that created a mandatory bundling program nationwide uh, for a, a many cities, not all cities, but for many cities, uh, known as the CJR, the Comprehensive Care for Joint Replacement uh, Bundled Payment System. It's mandatory. Uh, hospitals are primarily affected and it's about a 90-day window of care. It's an episode of care for, for hip and knee replacement patients under the Medicare program. And ultimately, this is very similar to the BCPI model. It takes uh, certain quality outcome measures, and if the patient achieves those measures, uh, the, the, the costs are compared to what the fee-for-service would have paid, and usually the provider will receive either an increase uh, incentive payment or, or a ding if they, don't, uh, if they don't achieve those quality outcomes. That program uh, started on April 1, and despite the fact that they don't have any patient data to see exactly how this program is operating or how it's working, whether it's achieving its goals, uh, they've expanded it to include hip fractures and some other conditions. They've also expanded a whole new bundled payment system, mandatory bundling program, for cardiac patients. Um, there are many other you know, patient categories that they could apply mandatory bundling to, and NAOP is very cognizant of that, and we're watching this very closely. Uh, it's a problem when you talk about orthotics and prosthetics in terms of access to patients. This is usually, a, a, the bundled payment system usually is about a 90-day window. It's a time-limited amount. So, if a patient does receive an amputation of some kind and need, needs a, a prosthesis, usually a definitive limb can be provided outside of that 90-day window uh, and billed directly to Medicare Part B. But part of the problem, and, and I suppose the same is true with some custom orthotics, although perhaps to a lesser extent. Uh, but part of the problem is getting access to that patient. The bundled payment systems are, are really hospital-led, and so if O&P practitioners do not have good relationships 
with those referral sources, they might, may wind up never receiving the referral in the first place. So it's important across the country that OMP providers really begin to understand their local markets and what's happening with bundling and all kinds of alternative payment models to ensure that you're plugged in and don't get left out in the cold. Uh, it, again, this is not something that's necessarily directly upon us, although there are some markets that are more advanced than others. Uh, but in the, in the end, uh, in, the, in the future, bundling will become a, a very important issue and a major, have a major impact on the orthotic and prosthetic profession. Thank you so much.